I got into steel drumming uh, when I was like 26 years old or something like that. Uh, I saw a steel drum band at the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Disney World. And I was teaching a marching band down there and we were gonna do a parade and we'd come out from the backstage area with, with a tour guide to, to show the directors around and we walked right into the center of a really large steel pan band. And it was amazing, you know, I had to be pulled away by the arm. I'm like, come on, we have, we have to do this thing over here. I'm like, oh, okay. I kept going back there every hour or so. So, you know, just to learn more about it and say, what is this amazing sound that's just surrounding me? We got home from the trip and started trying to research, well, what's a steel pan? Where, where does one get a steel pan? You know, or I didn't even know where they're really from, to be honest. I, I think just the, the whole tonality of what the steel pan sounded like, you know, it just literally the sound just surrounded you, you know, wrapped around you. And I was most intrigued by, I really could never hear the impact of the mallets striking the instrument, like you can with a, you know, percussion, most percussion instruments. So I thought that was really, really unique too. And the fact that everyone standing around it loved it so much, you're having a great time, the dancing, all that stuff, you know, and I thought, wow, what, what a perfect kind of music removes you from your everyday life that no other music had ever done before to me. You know, I had played classical music, uh, which I loved, I played jazz, rock and roll, all those things, and all have a very specific place in, in what they do. But this one really just seemed to just, you know, transport you. It, you know, it, it's the only music I've ever found that I've personally performed where I can play for anyone, anytime, you know, anywhere. And, and people seem to enjoy it and have a good time with it. I had a big, strong background in uh, drum set playing and uh, was learning Afro-Cuban instruments and that kind of thing. So I, I had a, a good foundation of what I thought was percussion. And then when I discovered steel pan, you basically take all that knowledge and piano background and everything, just throw it out the window for a little while while you learn where all the notes are. Uh, most people who know how to play marimba or piano, you know, which are the same note layout, they come behind a steel pan and they really are lost as I was. Um, so it took me a, a good, I would say, three months to just try to remember where all the notes were. You know, it's kind of like learning how to type. You know, the first day of typing, you're lost. Yeah, you know, why are all the all the letters all over the, the keyboard when A, B, C, D, E, F, G work fine, right? But once you learn where the notes are, it becomes much more easier, faster, makes more sense why they're there. And the same with the steel pan, you know, as you get comfortable with where the notes are, you're like, well, I'm really glad it's there because that makes how many right hands in a row I have to do or how many left hands in a row I have to do. I really felt like after the first year of working on it myself, you know, by myself, I had a decent idea of what I was doing, but it was still very limited, still very elementary. And, and there, were, there were times, there were months on end where I would just put it back in the case and put it away and not touch it because I was just very frustrated with it. I was frustrated and bored with myself because being a percussionist, having gone to music school, learning new instruments, that was no big deal to me. Teaching little kids how to play instruments, that was no big deal to me. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that was a good thing. You know, it gave me a, a chance to figure out what I was going to do with it and in ways that I never dreamed that would happen. You would never think that a steel drummer would come from, you know, basically the middle of a cornfield, but where I grew up in North Liberty, that's really what it was. You know, there's nothing around us, and, and I had never been on a cruise ship, you know, I barely had been to Florida more than a handful of times. And I thought, well, man, who's gonna want this, you know? And, and it's incredible, people do, and they call me all the time. I love what I do. You know, I, I get to perform at parties and, and be part of, you know, great social environments and, and that kind of thing and, and have amazing views, whether I'm playing at the Shedd Aquarium or on the 80th floor of the Aeon building or something, you know, it's looking all over the entire city or a backyard wedding, you know, it's, everyone's dressed up and, thing, and things. I love being a part of that. I love, I love traveling around the whole Midwest, putting every, all my stuff in the van and going, okay, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hate leaving home at the same time. I, I love doing what I do. Um, it, it's amazing to me, you know, when I get done with the song, people start to clap, and that blows my mind. You're like, really? <laughs> All he does is play this little song that I wrote a long time ago, you know, um, and, and people still like it. So for me, um, I think that's a la large part of it. Sometimes I notice when I, I play two weeks in a row, you know, 14, 18 gigs, right, in a two-week span, I'll get home and I'll have four or five days off, and I'm just like, no one's clapped for me today, you know? <laughs> it's just kind of a weird feeling. You, know, you, you kind of get addicted to that. The phone never stops ringing in, in the summertime. 
And believe it or not, the winter is not that bad either. Because a lot of people want to escape from it all. You know, we have 100 inches of snow out there. It's like, yeah, I think we'll have a beach party. You know, like, that's yeah, a great idea. 